moving from solid blenders to high viscosity mixers. High viscosity mixers could be vertical or they could be horizontal. So typically the vertical mixers are the anchor and the helical impellers. We already discussed you know, how the close clearance anchor impeller is used in vessels. You could have the single and the double planetary mixers. And then we have the horizontal mixers, which are typically the double arm mixers, the needle extruders, the single and twin screw extruders. And finally, we have the high shear mixing equipment. Commonly used high viscosity mixers, the vertical change can type of mixers. So here, as you can see in the image to the right, there is a mixer assembly and there is a bowl which can be removed. It's called a change can mixer because you can you know, get after mixing is completed, just move the can out and uh, you know, take it for further processing while the same mixer can be used to mix the next batch while the first one is being unloaded, discharged or processed. So what are the advantages of having a change can mixer? Well, the weighing of material can be accurately done. The cleaning of mixing vessel is easier, thereby resulting in less batch to batch contamination. Cleanability is an important consideration when it comes to food applications. The packing glands seals do not come in contact with the material thereby eliminating product contamination. So because it's a vertical mixer configuration, the process material or the food material will not come in contact with the seal areas of the mixing elements. So that eliminates product contamination. As we discussed, we could have multiple cans and they can be used to enhance the productivity without any downtime during the material discharge or charging. Because of the vertical configuration, these mixers can be operated at as low as 10% of the desired working capacity. So the operating range here is good. Uh, just like we had in a vertical cone blender, you could you know, operate from 10 to 100%. The same is the case for uh, change can mixers, most change can mixers. And discharge of highly viscous materials from mixing vessel can be achieved by locating the vessel on a separate hydraulically operated discharge systems. You could be handling materials which are extremely viscous, you know, viscosity to the tune of a few million centipoise where the material will not get discharged by the action of gravity or just by the push of the mixing blade. In such cases, you need additional devices which are hydraulically operated. These are called uh, discharge systems and they can be used to discharge the material. Again, uh, one of the favorite when it comes to mixing of dough or you know making batters. So the single planetary mixer, as the name suggests, the mixing takes place due to the planetary motion of the blades. As you can see on your top right, there's a planetary beater and the planetary beater rotates along the periphery of the vessel. At the same time, it rotates on its own axis. So that is the reason why it is called as a single planetary mixer. There are different kinds of beaters that can be used such as wire whip, hook type or the batter beater. The batter beater is used for cake mixing, for cream whipping, you use what is called as the, the egg whisk or the whipper or the dough hook when it comes to dough kneading at low speeds. The discharge of the material from a planetary mixer or the bowel can be by, by manual scooping when it comes to pasty materials that does not flow. And for materials which are flowable, uh, they can be discharged using a bottom wall. The single planetary mixer is used for mixing of dry and wet powders, light paste, gels and doughs. Well, we have a single planetary mixer, we also have a double planetary mixer. What does a double planetary mixer typically have? It has two mixing blades both of which have a planetary motion. So the mixer bowl here can be designed for vacuum condition, can be designed for uh, heating or cooling operation. And uh, these mixers are capable of handling high viscosities. Uh, viscosities to the tune of 5 million centipoise can be handled in a double planetary mixer. 
you can handle even higher viscosities by changing the the shape of the mixing blade so what you see in the picture uh, is uh, is a rectangular beater uh, there are other kinds of uh, beaters available uh, there is what is called as a helical blade there is um, there are a few other blade designs which are available and the choice of the blade uh, is dependent on the application that we are using sigma mixers workhouse when it comes to high viscosity mixing uh, very commonly used uh, again in the food industry in a sigma mixer you have two mixing blades these are sigma shaped you know, or s shaped as you can see in the image which are placed in a w shaped horizontal trough these blades as we said are close clearance and here the clearance between the vessel and the blade tips uh, the vessel and the blade tip is to the tune of one to two millimeters extremely extremely close clearance because you're handling viscous materials you need the blade action to cause material motion with two blades you actually can carry out the kneading action so material is pulled sheared compressed kneaded and folded by the action of the blades against the walls of the mixer trough these equipment could be jacketed for circulation of heating or cooling media if required they're capable of handling viscosities to the tune of 10 million centipoise the fill up volumes well 45 to 65 percent of the ball volume extremely high homogeneity can be achieved because of the blade configurations uh, so you can get a 99 percent homogeneous mix with viscous materials when you are using the sigma type mixer or the double arm mixer they are extremely high on power consumption you have two mixing blades they are heavy duty and uh, high torque applications uh, typically the specific power is in the range of 45 to 75 kilowatt for meter cube the well, sigma blade mixer or as it is called as a double arm mixer also comes with a lot of options so just like we saw the saw the sigma blade the s shaped blade you could have the masticator blade you know which which uh, in certain cases where the material could stick you know elastic sticky material that could stick into the cavities of the sigma blade and could just keep rotating with the blade you use the masticator blade which is far more solid and would not allow any sticking of materials as there are no cavities they are also capable of handling higher viscosities as compared to the sigma blade so you have the masticator blade and you have you know the spiral blade which is typically uh, a lower shear option as compared to the sigma blade and you have a naben blade which on the contrary here is an extremely high shear so uh, the application of uh, a naben blade uh, in the food industry is limited but in the food industry the sigma blade the spiral blade and the masticator blades can be used these the blade action is equally important. In other cases, we saw typically, other than the double arm paddle mixer, which had two, two mixing elements in the case of solids, here in the case of high viscosity mixers, we have the sigma blade, you know, the two sigma blades, which are, which are placed parallel to each other. And then the configuration in which they are placed would be either tangential, that is the blades move at tangents to each other, as you can see in image one on the top left, on the top right rather, and then uh, the overlapping blades where the blades rotate at same speeds and they overlap into the compartments so there's a w shaped trough as you can see in the in the tangential option the blades are restricted to a portion or a sector of the trough whereas in the overlapping the blades cut across the sections and that is the overlapping blade so Depending on the application, you choose the tangential blade option or the overlapping blade option. The tangential blade is generally used for materials with higher viscosities where kneading action is required, such as in case of doves. Overlapping blades are used for lighter materials viscosities are low, such as creams and pastes. Discharge options. Again, we are handling extremely high viscosities here, so we need we should have ways and means to discharge the material. How do we do it? Well, the most common method of discharging is by tilting the mixer container. 
after the mixing is completed, the container is tilted by say about 100 degrees. The blades are started and the material uh, comes out of the mixer. In certain applications, the, the material is non-sticky and does have some flowability. You can have a bottom discharge wall. And with the bottom discharge wall, the material just gets pushed out of the mixing vessel. There could be materials which are extremely viscous and neither the tilting option nor the bottom discharge works for them. Well, in such cases, we have what is called as a mixer extruder where you have a discharge screw located in the lower compartment. That's the image that you see in the right. Uh, you know, there are two blades and then between the two blades, there is an extruder screw. And that after the mixing is completed, pushes the material out. Well, while the mixing is happening, this blade rotates in an opposite direction and it also contributes to the mixing action. And because of this, you know, with, with this three blade configuration, the mixing time is low. You can have handle extremely viscous materials uh, to the tune of 10 million centipoise. Have we looked at high shear mixing equipment okay, where there are applications where you require to create dispersions. Dispersions in the case of food could be for preserving the food value or increase resistance to spoilage. High shear impellers can also be used to incorporate powdered materials or create a stable emulsion resulting in formation of viscous paste. They can be used for breaking agglomerates of particles and liquids. So these mixers are also used uh, for handling uh, some food applications. And you could have the rotor stator type mixer, the batch or inline mixer, or what you see here is a dual shaft mixer with an anchor agitator and a high speed disperser. Depending on the type of mixer, the construction of the mixer, the specific power could vary from 30 kilowatt to 50 kilowatt per meter cube. The fill levels could range from 20 to 85% of the mixing vessel and viscosities to the tune of 8 million centipoise can be handled with high shear mixing equipment. Just quickly, let's review the different mixing equipment uh, which are used for high viscosity applications. Sigma mixer, that's a GMP Sigma mixer. And that's with the tilting arrangement, as you can see, uh, and as we said, the material discharges by tilting of the mixer container. So that's hydraulically tilted. What you see is a set of overlapping blades. The blades overlap into the compartments. That's the action of the blades. Overlapping. That's a 6,000 liter working capacity Sigma mixer powered by 275 horsepower. And that's the tangential Sigma mixer. As you can see, you know, the blades are limited to the compartment, but this gives very good kneading action. That's a Sigma mixer with a bottom discharge wall. I mean, in the food industry, this is used for making, you know, wafer biscuits and chocolates. You can, the dough can be discharged. We talked about the masticator blade, which is a heavy duty, Type double arm mixer, the Maven mixer, it's called as a fishtail. That gives high shear. A shredder, you could have applications where you want a shredding application. It may not be common in the food industry, but definitely when you're handling, you know, cellulose, pulp. That's a kneader extruder, so two set of two blades along with a screw for product discharge, capable of handling viscosities up to 10 million centipoise. Oh, that's a quick clean design. So we talked about, you know, being able to clean the mixer and uh, uh, that could be fairly challenging when it comes to the Sigma mixer. So. Uh, we have developed a, a quick clean design where the entire mixer assembly can open up in quick time 
you know, and and automatically after the batch is completed, you can see here the masticator blades. The blades are completely exposed, and you can easily clean them. The mixing vessel yeah, that is accessible for cleaning. There's a hydraulically operated top cover, so you open the mixer from one side. You're opening the mixer from the top. And then you open it from the other side as well. So now you have a 360 degree access to the, the mixer internals and you can easily clean. It's just as easy to box it up again. Quick review of that. That's the mixer in the assembled condition. That's the material. You can see how viscous that material is. That's opened up, cleaned. Quickly in design. Talk about a double planetary mixer. When you said, you know, two planetary blades, blades running in, you know, having a planetary motion, as you can see here, capable of handling high viscosity applications here. Change can, so you can remove the bowel from position, you know, just take it off, put a next bowel. Extremely viscous material, so you need, you know, a hydraulic ram to push the material out of the vessel after it is mixed. This ram comes down and forces the material out. Yeah. Again, extremely, extremely viscous. And then you have the multi shaft uh, double planetary mixer with uh, twin dispersers. So there's this planetary motion, and then there is the uh, high speed dispersers. 